Hello, my name is Stephen Rackman, and I'm a professor in the English department at Michigan State University, but I also have a specialty in the history of medicine, and it's part of that history that I'm going to speak to you about in this series of lectures. These lectures concern the English physician, John Snow, who was born in Yorkshire in 1813 and died in London in 1858. He lived a short but eventful life in his 45 years, and he is best known to us as a foundational figure in the history and development of anesthesia and also the history of epidemiology. It is extremely rare for any individual of any kind to make an achievement in such a way in, in such important disciplines, but especially for someone coming from humble origins in a working class family in Yorkshire and rising up to become a, an extremely important figure in Victorian England. And this lecture is going to focus on his life and career to a certain extent, but our particular focal point is his most famous case, uh, the outbreak of cholera in 1853 and 54, and in particular, the outbreak that occurred in Broad Street, London, Golden Square, and how Snow uh, developed his own theories from that. Now, this is probably the most celebrated uh, incident in his career, but it's also uh, probably the most mythologized. That is, there's a lot of inaccurate information that surrounds that. And so the purpose of these lectures are to put your understanding of Snow's achievement and his investigations in a proper historical, uh, medical, epidemiological, and social context so that we can evaluate uh, the nature of that achievement without mythologizing it. And on another level, we want to think about him as a, a flexible thinker, a, a person who is able to make uh, intuitive and um, uh, rational uh, leaps of um, insight into problems that were terrifying to the population and baffling to the experts of his day. Given that we have recently gone through a pandemic, I think it, it should be clear to everyone how important these kinds of skills are for, for all of us, and one of the great purposes of study is to be able to take whatever fields of expertise we cultivate and to promote them in a way that is both a benefit to our disciplines but also to mankind in general. So what did John Snow do um, in this particular moment that we're thinking about in 1854 in London that has uh, led him to be so celebrated. And basically he investigated a cholera epidemic that was going on there. And we need to step back and think about what cholera was in the 19th century. Today, cholera exists everywhere. We usually hear about it when there are outbreaks in refugee camps or any place where there's unsanitary water conditions. We know now that cholera is spread by a bacterium and that particular bacterium, it, it reproduces very quickly and it dehydrates the body of the infected patient. And that dehydration can be very severe and will lead to death if it is untreated. Uh, we generally treat it by replacing fluids in a person. But all of this was unknown in the 19th century. And John Snow did not know uh, for certain about the existence of what we'd call animalcules or germs. Um, that is, tiny microscopic organisms that reproduce in uh, bodies or hosts or ever um, favorable conditions that exist. He had to um, work through these kinds of health issues through the existing theories of the time. And we will be discussing those in the lectures as well to understand what medical thought was in the period and how his innovations in medical thinking uh, were received and understood and argued about and debated and then ultimately accepted. Now, cholera um, came in waves. Its origins are endemic to India and Asia. And what started to happen in the 19th century was as the modern world started to take shape and global shipping routes 
were developed and there was much more transatlantic or transpacific or transoceanic travel, we started to see epidemics spreading across the world and they would happen periodically. So for Jon Snow growing up in England, England was visited by a pandemic in 1832 where cholera struck coming into the ports both in the north and the south of England in particular and it hit very hard then. And then there were minor outbreaks that would happen in between, but then the next great outbreak was in 1848 and 1849, and that one hit London particularly hard, and that's the one that Jon Snow begins to investigate in a serious way. It turns out that in 1832 he was a young apprentice doctor in Yorkshire, and he actually visited uh, the, the mines, he was apprenticing in Newcastle and outside of Newcastle where there are a lot of coal mines. He spent time with coal miners and he uh, saw the, uh, um, his first face-to-face -face encounters with um, cholera victims and, and it gave him an understanding of the, the horror of the disease, but he didn't properly investigate it till he was already a practicing physician in London in 1848 and 1849. After the 1848 and 49 epidemic, he came up with the theory that it was transmitted through drinking water or people inadvertently swallowing human waste that contained cholera bacterium and would reproduce in the, um, the gut of the individual and then be transmitted either back into the water supply or um, directly transmitted to another by in, inadvertent forms of transmission. Then he develops that theory in 1848 and 49 and publishes it in a very important first attempt to try and propound the theory called the mode of communication of cholera. And this title is important. He would use it again when he refined his theory. And mode of communication is such an interesting phrase to use that he wanted to create a neutral phrase uh, to simply talk about how diseases were transmitted. And he created this general framework for thinking about it without using terms like contagion or miasma or humoral theories, any of the older models uh, in, in the history of medicine. He created a study there in 1848 and 49 where he propounded his theory. It was not generally accepted and it certainly wasn't accepted by the Board of Health or any of the, the powerful medical authorities in London, but there were um, debates raging over how cholera was spread and um, people were working on it in many different quarters. He continued his work as, as a physician and an anesthesiologist and then in 1853 and 54 when cholera returned to London he knew that he had an opportunity to really um, open up his study of it and to prove in a deeper way his case. And he did that in several ways, which I will talk about in subsequent lectures. But what happens in late summer, basically August 31st of 1854, in Broad Street and the Golden Square area, which is a working class part of London at this time, is a terrible outbreak where up to 600 individuals die within 10 days or so of cholera. And it seems to be a point source outbreak and Jon Snow is contacted by the parish there to aid in the investigation of this outbreak, which is being led by a reverend who's also an epidemiologist named Henry Whitehead. And between basically August 31st, 1854 and September 8th or 9th, a great number of individuals die of cholera very quickly and they're sort of overwhelmed by it. And Jon Snow has already had his theory for a long time. In fact, he's, he's doing a long sort of survey at the point when the outbreak occurs in South London to look at the water supplies of South London in order to prove that water is the main vector, as we call it, for cholera. And so he diverts um, himself from that study and goes and does, based on the, the morbidity records that are coming in, a study of um, the deaths that are going on in Broad Street. And he already suspects that water might be the agent and he knows uh, that there is a pump in Broad Street there. 
and he begins to start to trace evidence that might connect uh, a contamination in that pump in Broad Street to the outbreak that occurs there. He makes inquiries on his own. He uh, combines those with information coming from the General Records Office, uh, the General Registrar's Office, that is, and he um, uses those pieces of evidence to come before the board and then request that the handle on that pump be removed as a public sa safety measure in order to uh, mitigate the uh, effects of the outbreak there. And that is agreed to and the pump handle is removed and Jon Snow becomes um, uh, one of the people who's, who's most sort of celebrated for this public health gesture. Now at the time, the Board of Health and the larger London authorities did not necessarily accept his conclusion that the pump handle being removed was, uh, was necessary, uh, that this was a, um, in fact, proof that water was the sole mode of transmission. But it has come down to us sort of as um, one of those very important cases in the history of epidemiology where a public health understanding takes on symbolism, and it takes on a kind of public symbolism. Now, in 1855, people were still complaining that the pump handle had been removed, and they wanted it put back on because they liked the drinking water in Broad Street. But on a larger level, Jon Snow's actions here came um, to symbolize a sense of how an informed medical opinion could not prevent an epidemic as it was happening, but rather when the next epidemic occurred in 1866, people were now prepared. And they now understood in a more clear and settled way that if there were these kinds of outbreaks where there seemed to be a point source uh, that you could clearly identify that might be a public health threat, it would be prudent to take public health measures and to save the population from that. And that's precisely what happened in 1866. Now, Jon Snow died in 1858, and he did not live to see that recognition. But nonetheless, it stands as a kind of symbol for how human beings can face the terrifying prospect of epidemic disease and through the, the cogent power of um, shoe leather epidemiology, going house to house, making inquiries, find what the mysterious modes of transmission are and make prudent recommendations about them.